Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 where I decided to try out the mod Principia for the first time during a live stream. Principia is a mod that introduces n-body physics into Kerbal Space Program. What that means is that by default in Kerbal Space Program you have one gravitating body that you are centered around and that is tugging you with its gravity, either the moon or the earth or the sun, but not a combination of those at the same time. Principia allows it to be a combination of them at the same time. So it uh, you will have the Earth, Moon, and Sun, and all the planets and everything else uh, trying to pull on you simultaneously, creating very interesting orbits as a result. So we wanted that in here because of, of course, the James Webb Space Telescope launched recently. That's what you see here on the Ariane 5 from Real Scale Boosters. That uh, James Webb Space Telescope, I think, is the only James Webb Space Telescope mod available for Kerbal Space Program. Uh, it has all the fold-out stuff, and it's all very fancy and looks good. Uh, but And it is the right mass right now. I made sure of that. But the position of the James Webb Space Telescope at the second Lagrange point is entirely dependent on being tugged by both the Earth and the Sun simultaneously. So you can't put it in the right position if you're in regular Kerbal Space Program, even with real solar system and all that business, because it just won't stay where it's supposed to be. Now, trying to get it to stay where it's supposed to be is going to be a trick, especially since I haven't used Principia before. So I need to learn how to do that. One of the struggles is that we don't have a way to focus on the second Lagrange point. Basically, the James Webb Space Telescope has to orbit that point and so it would be nice if in map view we could like focus on the point as the frame of reference so that we could see whether the space telescope is actually orbiting it. But we can't do that as far as I know unless you guys have an idea of how to do that. Now in this case I shut down the engine early. I had forgotten that it had only one ignition. The upper stage of Ariane 5 only ignites once. And so it has to continue to burn all the way out. But uh, it was necessary anyway for me to figure out what the actual timing was and how much we would have to burn. So I decided to learn how to plot a maneuver in Principia, which is completely different from regular Kerbal Space Program. In fact, they don't even call the directions prograde, retrograde, uh, or radial or something like that. They have the color coding at least. So we see that the tangent one is what we would often call prograde and retrograde. And so the colors uh, are associated with it. The blue one is radial, even though it's not called that. Uh, so yes, there are many changes, including the nav ball, you must have noticed by now. The, what is normally called orbit is now Earth-centered inertia, uh, inertial. So, but it, it looks very different, obviously, but it is effectively the orbital view. And then there was the previous one, which was the surface one that we saw. So I'm tweaking the orbit here, and what we don't, I don't think we want an exit like that. I think that that would not be good. I think we want some sort of perturbation around the Earth, but not so tight. But it could be that we want like a really close exit, you know, a close path where it seems like it's going on escape, but isn't really. Uh, it has to orbit the Lagrange point uh, with a six month orbit, which is a pretty wide orbit. But in what direction is something else that I am not entirely sure. So I can figure out, you can see that our apoapsis is basically around the right area, 1,000, sorry, 1.4 million kilometers. But yeah, uh, something like that might be good. It seems loose enough there. Uh, but again, it's tough to be sure unless we can actually see the second Lagrange point. Uh, the second Lagrange point, incidentally, is opposite of Earth from the sun. So basically it'd be like the Earth is covering the sun at the Lagrange point. So we have to get over to there at about 1.5 million kilometers above Earth. And it's 1.4 for James Webb, and it'll depend on how everything else is around. Uh, we are not launching on the right date exactly. We're, we're launching on, as you can see, December 25th there, but, and I decided to launch at the right time. But that doesn't mean like the moon is in the right place and the moon has an outsized influence too. And so yeah, it's uh, a little bit iffy, but I'm still learning how to use Principia, so I decided to be all right for now until I nail down a few things. 
As far as the launch is concerned, I was trying to refine it, and actually this time we're gonna launch too high. Uh, I have way too much, as it turns out, uh, delta. V well, I mean the delta V in the core is maybe 100 meters per second too much, and uh, we launched it a little bit too high, so we're going to end up not quite in the right place here. As you can see, uh, it's better if we uh, stay closer to the Earth and get the benefit of the overth effect and all that business. Uh, so this is not optimal. We end up getting a decent, well actually too high an apoapsis. And as a result with that too high apoapsis, we're definitely on escape. So that is not what we want. But I separated off to make sure that works out. And we get to test thrusters on this, which I sort of put uh, where I felt like I wanted them instead of where exactly they are. Forgive me, but I didn't need the frustration as we tested things out. So yeah, that's on escape. That's not, I think, how we wanted. Uh, there is the matter of correction burns along the way, and especially the burn at the top at apoapsis. We certainly at least need an apoapsis in order to make it happen, and we did not have an apoapsis, uh, an earth-fixed or earth-inertial apoapsis there. We were clearly just being flung out. So anyway, the, I had the setting uh, too high there, so it's showing mo many, many orbits of each of the planets there. This is the Earth-fixed view, though, so even the Sun has an orbit in this view. It's sort of like the pre-Copernican uh, situation. Yep, so you can have the the view before Copernicus, if you were not the rod, the, uh, the actual guy. Uh, it's, it's complicated. Uh, you get to pick between the Earth-fixed view or the Sun-fixed view and various variations thereof. Okay, so this time I have to manage it a little bit more proper so that our second stage stays closer to the Earth when it's doing its burn, and I do manage that. But we're actually getting a little bit too much juice from the first stage, I think. Alright, off that goes. But that's fine in the end, I mean... We just need to get to where we're going. Ultimately, the purpose of this for me is to do try to test out various servicing mission possibilities. So even if we don't get the space telescope into the exact position in the exact same way they did, as long as it's just as difficult to get there, that'll be fine by me. Uh, that will validate the servicing mission plan as long as it's just as difficult. But anyway. Here I'm playing around with the uh, different modes. Here's the surface view, and I misinterpreted this initially. I was going, I thought this was perturbations, but it's actually showing it like that because, of course, the Earth will be rotating. And since this is a surface fixed view, and we have, you know, a four hour orbit initially, there was six pedals, and then as we get closer to five hour orbit, there's five pedals. Uh, you know, you take 25, uh, 24 hours divided by somewhat under five, you get. Uh, four hours and 48 minutes. Anyway, so that's what's happening there. And then Pekka noted I should probably switch to the orbit view, which is actually showing what you would normally expect in Kerbal. But I was sort of infatuated with all these surface fixed views and the patterns they make as a result, as you can see there. You obviously don't get to see these sorts of things without Principia. Uh, though, of course, uh, technically in stock, they would make these patterns if you were actually focused on a surface fixed point view. This is not based on n-body physics per se. So, yep, yeah, just enjoying the funny patterns as we go out. But eventually we have to go back to taking things seriously. And we are getting our final bit of the burn in. Ooh, that, that was inadvisable. And I shut down a little bit early there, unfortunately. And you can see the apoapsis, that's less than what we need. Pekka, who is more versed in Principia than I am, obviously, well, anybody who's used it is more versed than I am, uh, but advised a minor burn to correct that, and it turned out that we could easily boost our orbit with the delta V we have in the space telescope, so I went ahead and uh, tried that out. But again, it's a little bit difficult to see where I want to be, and here I've uh, tuned up 
add a few more perturbations. The way, the reason why stock Kerbal Space Program does not have this in-body system is because it takes a lot of computing power. And the way Principia deals with that is it limits how many orbits or how far ahead it's looking. And so, and that includes with the planets, because if it looks too far, that uh, has a high cost to computing power. So we have to tune how far ahead it's going to be looking for each of these missions. And here I am doing the burn. Initially, it looks like we're on escape, but as we keep uh, going out, it actually folds back in, which, well, that's something to get used to. Okay, suddenly we have a lower per, uh, lower apoapsis than we used to, right? I mean, it's it's strange, but it is possible because different things are tugging us at different times. So there, it just sort of folded back in, even though it had been on escape. Uh, so, and you can see how drastic even a slight puff can make the result, even though uh, these are all within one year. So, and we, uh, the, our scope has to be more than one year even, because we have to verify that the space telescope is on the opposite side of Earth from the Sun for the entire year. It should be always on that side. Uh, this right here, I think, is a permanent escape, so I decided not to burn higher than that on the apoapsis, even though the real thing is is higher than that, I believe. But because of our different timing, maybe we need to be a little bit lower? I don't know. There are many questions, and I'm still getting used to all these things. So here I am taking a look at it, and yeah. I decided to tune it up and see uh, what the long-term situation is, and well, that's the long-term situation if you can make any sense of it. Uh, though, you know, at least one thing we can check out is whether it's crashing into the surface. But that's a lot of periapses and apoapses, apses to consider. But ultimately, I try and check whether the orbit is staying on the right side of Earth on the slightly higher side of Earth. It should maintain the same period as Earth. There's sort of a trick to this. Basically, it's higher up than Earth constantly around the Sun. However, because of the way Earth and the Sun are tugging it, it has the same period. There's a whole centrifugal force thing going. Anyway, so it actually has the same period even though uh, it is higher up all the time. So, yeah, trying to figure that out is a little bit difficult for me right now with Principia, but at least I got the basics of how to tune things, add maneuvers, and uh, the frames of reference that it has. So, I'll continue to work on it, and maybe you guys have some tips as far as how we might put the space telescope in the right place. Uh, ultimately, it might be that the thing to correct for the fact that it's slipping inside Earth's orbit right now is the burn at apoapsis that's supposed to do. Maybe that will be enough to make sure that stays outside because when we reach apoapsis the first time, it will be on the outside uh, with relation to the Earth and the Sun. So yeah, but I have to figure out how to plot that and make sure that happens. But there's a state of it, and ultimately what I want to do here is to do test out servicing missions, let's say with Orion or Starship or stuff like that. So that's the long-term plan, but I have a few things to learn here. And so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.